Galatians, the third chapter. We see a problem that people were having between Christ and the law. Really, this whole section of Galatians deals with entrapments, things that we can let rule in our lives, things that we can let take over what we're really supposed to be doing. We kind of get our priorities out of order. He goes on and tells us that the promise was made to Abraham 430 years before the law even came along. We're still wrestling with what to do with the law today. The Jews particularly were. If we turn back to Genesis, we, we can be reminded that the promise to Abraham was that he would have more descendants than the sands of the seashore and the stars of the sky. That's a pretty big family. Then he promised them a land that they would live in. Like if you're going to have a big family, you've got to have a place to stay. So he promised them a land. The third part was that all nations would be blessed through one of those descendants. In the third chapter of Galatians we read, he gives uh, some examples. In verse 16 he says, The promises were spoken to Abraham and to his seed. Scripture does not say, and to seeds, meaning many people, but and to your seed, meaning one person, who is Christ. We're here to remember the fulfillment of that promise. Okay, pray with me. Dear God, thank you for this day. Thank you for sending your one and only Son to die on the cross for us. And please let us all remember why he did it. In Jesus' name, amen. Pray with me. Dear God, thank you for this day. Please help us remember Jesus' death on the cross and why he did it. For he is the reason that we are all here today. In Jesus' name, amen. Dear God, thank you for all the blessings that you give us. Please hope that everything gets better in our lives that's happening right now. Please help that everything is better. Please hope that everything is good about ourselves. Please hope that you keep us safe and secure. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And so if there were a group of us that were friends that decided, and, and I didn't get to participate in this one because I already had a job, but there was a group of my friends that they decided we're going to go to California. We were in San Angelo. And so they got in a van and they drove to California. And then they drove back. They went all the way to the beach and came back. Now some of y'all are thinking, that's so stupid. <laughs> and some of y'all are thinking, that's pretty cool. Just to go to the beach and come back. But I remember being young and being excited by the adventure, being uh, wanting to go places. I, I, as I've been thinking about this lesson, I, I've thought a lot about my trip to Africa uh, and the excitement that there was because I didn't know better. <laughs> I didn't know what the food was going to be like. I tried to convince Don East this morning and it's okay to eat mice that are offered to you on a stick beside the road. <laughs> She's not convinced. I didn't try them, I'm, but I'm sure they're okay. <laughs> 
I didn't know, but I was excited. I wanted to go, and I was eager to learn. And so I spent a month in Africa. Now I'd ask a lot more questions. Like, are you going to leave me there? <laughs> Am I going to have to, a place to stay? Is there going to be somebody to translate for me in every place that I go? Lots of questions because I've gotten older. And we were left in Africa alone. And we're walking down the street, me and my friend who had never been out of the state of Texas, wondering, where are we going to spend tomorrow night? What are we going to eat? How are we going to make it the next two weeks? These guys see Jesus. They're, they're already wanting to follow John. They're wanting to uh, buy into this new kingdom that John's talking about. And John points them to Jesus and they're like, let's go. And they take off after Jesus. Verse 38. Turning around, Jesus saw them following and asked... What do you want? Now, I would love to know how he asked this. What do you want? What do you want? I, I don't know how he asked this, uh, but I, I find it very fascinating that Jesus doesn't say, follow me. He asked them, what do you want? If you would, allow him to ask you this morning, in your pursuit of Jesus, what do you want? You can write that one down. Or you can circle it in your Bible. Or how, whatever it is. But I want that question to bug you for a little while. What do you want? In my pursuit of Jesus, what is it that I want? Because we, we tend to find what we look for, don't we? We tend to find what we're seeking. And so that question, I think, is very important. I also wonder, what's Jesus doing? What's he doing here? That he just out, just happens to be out in the wilderness where John is, but he's just walking along? <laughs> Doesn't he have work to do? Shouldn't he be like healing people or, you know, changing water to wine or something important? But now he's just out walking. And John's like, hey, there's, there's the Lamb of God. So these two fo start following him. Jesus says, what do you want? And they said, Rabbi, where are you staying? That may be your question for Jesus. Um, uh, I mean, that's what they ask. Um, I, I might want to know, can we come with you? <laughs> um, do you have room for us in your... I, I don't know. But their question is, where are you staying? Jesus doesn't answer them. He doesn't say, well, I'm, I'm over in the inn in Bethlehem right now. Y'all want to come? Or I'm just kind of walking around right now. See ya. Jesus says, come and you'll see. He invites them into this journey. He invites them. That's how I got to Africa. Somebody invited me into a journey. They said, hey, would you like to go on a trip to Africa next summer? And I said, yes. Yes. I was invited to come here. Hey, would you like to be our preacher at Garland Street? And I said, yes. That's how, that's how we get into the really great adventures. This is when someone says, hey, you want to you wanna go to California? <laughs> Not really. Oh, come on, get in the van. Let's go. Come, and you will see. So they went, and they saw where he was staying, and we're not told. We are not told where he was staying. We're not told what this means, come and, and you'll see, or why they're asking where he's staying. We're not given that information. John doesn't care about that. 
What he cares about is we have two guys that were disciples of John the Baptist who saw Jesus and they started following him. And Jesus said, what do you want? And they said, we just want to know where you're staying. And he said, come and you will see. They spent that day with him. It was about the 10th hour. Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, was one of the two who heard what John had said and who had followed Jesus. He's one of the fishermen. He's one of the fishermen that the other gospel writers say was working on the nets. And Jesus walked by the Sea of Galilee and said, follow me. John tells it differently. Andrew, Simon's Peter, Simon Peter's brother, was one of the two who heard what John had said and who had followed Jesus. The first thing Andrew did was to find his brother Simon and tell him, We have found the Messiah, that is the Christ. And he brought and Andrew brought Simon Peter to Jesus. I think that's pretty cool. Jesus looked at Peter and said, You are Simon, son of John. You will be called Cephas. Which, is, which when translated, is Peter. Isn't that cool? I'm going to tell you, at the end of the, of the lesson, I'm going to give you a question to ask. And the question is to ask Jesus where he's going that day. Where he's going to be. And if he invites you to follow... I would also encourage you to invite your brother. That could be your sister, a friend. Invite somebody to go with you. When you find out where Jesus is, don't go alone. Go find somebody to take with you. It's a good thing. Uh, that's how discipleship works. Okay, so Andrew goes and finds Peter. First thing he does. Verse 43. The next day, Jesus decided to leave for Galilee. Finding Philip, he said to him, follow me. So here's our first follow me. Philip, like Andrew and Peter, was from the town of Bethsaida. Philip found Nathanael. Hey, look, somebody else. He went and found somebody else to go with Jesus. And told him, we found the one Moses wrote about in the law and about whom the prophets also wrote, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. Nathanael asked, Nazareth? Can anything good come from there? Now, I, growing up in Bovina, I asked this during basketball season. The only answer I got was, yes, they have really good basketball players there. Um, and it was never pretty. Philip's response, come and see. Again, another invitation. Just come. Come with me. When Jesus saw Nathanael approaching, he said to, of him, Here's a true Israelite in whom there is nothing false. I love Nathanael's response. How do you know me? <laughs> so you obviously know who I am. There's nothing false in this guy. How many of you, if, if someone said, Hey, I know you. There's nothing false in you. How many of you would, would confess to that? Yep, that's right. <laughs> There's nothing bad in me. <laughs> Nathanael's like, Hey, that's me. I'm your guy. Jesus answered, I saw you while you were still under the fig tree before Philip called you. Nathanael declared, Rabbi, teacher, you are the son of God. You are the king of Israel. And Jesus said, you believe because I told you that I saw you under the fig tree. You shall see greater things than that. And then he added, I tell you the truth, you, you shall see heaven open and the angels of God ascending and descending on the Son of Man. Come and see. And by the way, when you come and see, you're going to see greater things than that. Now, I don't know what it means that Nathaniel is going to be able to see angels ascending and descending on the Son of Man. John doesn't explain that to us. I haven't seen that happen, so I don't know what that looks like. But Jesus says, I've got something to show you. I've got more than you can imagine to show you. 
if you'll just go with me. So I want to ask some of you to think back a long way, some of you a short way, to remember what it was like to be able to just go follow after someone or something, to remember the excitement, to remember uh, the, the wide-eyed look that you had, the innocence, the obliviousness of it all. To be able to just go, just see, just do. As I have aged, I have discovered that I try to learn. I, I try to figure out ways to achieve. I, I try to figure it all out instead of just going and singing? I want all the answers first. If I get stuck in my faith, I do things like I try to read more, study more. I, I look for another spiritual discipline to try out thinking that the answer is in there somewhere. I, I read about the fruit of the Spirit. And I read all the different fruits that there are when the Spirit comes into your life and, and dwells in you, those fruits that naturally occur. And I decide that I want to have more peace. And so I begin to work to have more peace thinking that if I work hard enough for peace, I can achieve peace. Forgetting that peace is a fruit that just grows when the Spirit lives within me. And not through my desire or effort. I've been a Christian a long time. Sometimes I get in the rut of just going through the motions, doing what we're supposed to do, and I forget that we are all called to come and see. We're all called to follow in the steps of Jesus. Not to study and figure things out, not to work to achieve, but to see Jesus. And to join in the work that he has begun. And so I'm encouraged by these two guys who are already hanging out with John, wanting their lives to be part of this radical new way of kingdom. This repentance that leads to a different lifestyle. Because that's kind of what I bought into. I was okay with all the sacrifice and the giving up and, and the, the dying through baptism because I wanted a new life. But maybe I need to hear Jesus ask again, what do you want? What do you really want? I could give you some of my answers, but I want you to think about the question. And I want to challenge you this week. And hopefully it'll, be, it'll go beyond that. But for each day this week, when you wake up, ask Jesus. And do this in your own way, but address it as, Jesus, I have a question for you. Jesus, where are you staying today? Jesus, where are you going? And then if he invites you, go. Jesus, where are you going today? 
And if he invites you, go. Simple enough, right? Simple to ask the question. If he invites you, it's probably not going to be to a comfortable spot, but it'll be a good spot. It's probably not going to be to a place of peace, but he's given you the peace to take with you. It might be a place where you have to have a little bit of faith because you're afraid. That's okay. Jesus, uh, Peter jumped out of a boat and lived. So ask the question and listen for the answer. And some of you are saying, this doesn't make any logical sense at all. And I'm going to say, you're absolutely right. It does not. Ask the question and go where Jesus invites you. Maybe this morning he's inviting you into a deeper walk with him. He's been inviting you and you've been ignoring it. Uh, we want to invite you too. I'd love to say we have all the answers and we got it all figured out, but we don't. That's what's so great about this life. <laughs> he just keeps inviting us to follow him. Not to find the answers. <laughs> Not to have it all together. Just to walk with him. And so we're your fellow sojourners, and we're willing to pray with you, willing to walk with you a little bit closer if you need that. If you're ready to submit your life to him, to be baptized, uh, we, we have a baptistry that's ready. We would love to assist you in that. Uh, so if you have a need this morning, let us know how we can serve you. Uh, one of the elders is going to come close us out. Uh, you can find me right around here uh, after services. Um, there's people sitting close to you, most of you. Uh, talk to them. If you need help, we're all here as a priesthood of believers. Uh, so if you need something this morning, we certainly want to, uh, to help you in any way that we can. Looks like Randy's getting ready to come up here. Come on, Randy. I'd like to remind everyone, if you didn't get one of the handouts, please uh, get, get one of them. There's a lot of information in there. <clears throat> a couple of things. I know Charlie Gonzalez is waiting on the results of the biopsy that they did for him, and he's, he's really struggling. He's, he's, he's losing weight. It's just, a, it's just a real struggle for him, so please keep them in your prayers, and he'll be going back to Dallas again for uh, further treatment once they have some answers for him. And also I want to point out that... Uh, Becky's uh, son-in-law, Jeff, it was in the hospital, severe internal injuries from hitting a deer, and they were going to do some more tests on him, and they found out that he has COVID as well. He's really struggling, so just to be in, be in prayer for them as well. And for the Snipes family, uh, Scott's mother died. Uh, her services were in the health center yesterday. Yeah, yesterday. So there's just a, an awful lot going on. You know, we got folks around us that are, that are always under some kind of a stress, and uh, and sometimes our kind word is what they need to hear at just the right moment. <clears throat> I'd like to close us out to, today with uh, some thoughts from uh, Colossians. Uh, it's a good book to read. It's only four chapters. It's, Paul's kind of got all the loose ends I think he's tying up as he writes this letter to Colossians but in in chapter 3 he, he talks about uh, uh, holy living he talks about how being raised with Christ and being put to death to the things uh, of the past and to live as God's chosen people at the very end of chapter 3 he says let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts since as members of one body you were called to peace and be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly as you teach and admonish one another with all wisdom. And as you sing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs with gratitude in your heart to God. And whatever you do, whether in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord. 
In the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. So I call on us, everything that we do in word or deed this week, let's, let's call on Jesus and ask his blessing on those things. Would you pray with me, please? Heavenly Father, we've got so many in our church family that are hurting, uh, and extended family and, and members. Lord, there's only one place that peace comes from, and that's from you, Lord. Help each, each one deal with the stresses and trials of this life, knowing that you offer more. You offer more than this life. You offer peace that we can't understand, and you offer love that we don't deserve, but you give freely. Lord, help us to share that love with one another in all the things that we do in our words and our deeds. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Dismissed.